Hey everyone, welcome back to Microsoft Life Simulator. Welcome back to the channel after a good few months of taking a break. And welcome back to the Tui787 beautiful free livery. Um, so yeah, today we're going to be powering up the 787-800 used by Tui from Cold and Dark. And um, so yeah, we're on the ground here at Granny Adams International. Right next to Airbus A321 and a oh, not aircraft there. Okay, there's a terminal. Beautiful. This is uh, the accurate, complete accurate model of the terminal here. Anyways, let's get on with this corner dark tutorial. Uh, set in the cockpit. So, welcome to the cockpit, the 787. So when you hop in, the first thing you'll see is it'll start to power itself up because when by default the battery will be on but no, the APO won't be started, the IRS systems will be on, um, the AC buses are automatically on, you have your, one of your lights on, you have, most things are on and everything started up and if I'm correct, the engines are already started. I'm repairing this off from cold and dark, and uh, what you want to do right now is set up your parking brake. You want to go to index, you got this in cold and dark state. This aircraft is currently fully powered up and uh, ready to fly. You'll go to load PNL, which means load panel. You'll click on cold and dark. And now you'll see the aircraft will start to power it's all down. The engines will stop spinning. Engines will start spinning. You can still hear it going on in the background, but engines are completely stop spinning. This is the General Electric seven eight seven eight hundred, which two we fly in real life. Okay, so the seven eight seven has a dark cockpit. A very black and gray cockpit with a little bit of white inside. Very nice looking cockpit in my opinion. You have your York right here. You have a throttle quadrant. The lower panel. The upper panel right here. Upper panel. You have your HUD which can come down and you can use it when you have the aircraft powered up. You have an EMB which comes with a quality wing 787 correction. You have your 787 evacuation right here. You have your oxygen mask right here. You have your MCP autopilot panel. And you have your displays here, here, and here. Your one, two, three, four, five displays. But they're all, well, actually, yeah, they all are separated into two different compartments. This, these displays are similar to the 737 Max's displays. Other, the only difference is that they have. Each, each half is divided into two things. So like this will be the, um, this here, um, the side here that I'm pointing to would be the um, MFD. And then you would have your nav display over here and you have your MFD here. When you start up by default, it will have the nav display on or the checklist or whatever. You can select different screens here. You can select which one you want to change. So if you want to change the left MFD you can change that and if you want to change the right one here same thing for the co-pilot only that it will change his displays his or her displays and then you have the lower MFD which you can put the CDU most people would use the CDU down here mainly the CDU basically um but you have you can put an app display like on the 7 8 7 5, 37 or it's triple seven you can put anything that you could put up here we have our landing gear lever and the rest of our thing for landing right here. You have your backup display here. You have your autopilot panel slash MCP. You have your flap sleeve with your throttle. You have fuel control switches. Your steering brake. Your parking brake. Make sure to pull that up, or in the future we won't be able to do some. Won't be able to have some functions. Um. We also have a hot on the co-pilot side. 
a backup uh, compass because you wanted the aircraft fail. And by all means, you should take precautions in this as you should in real life because things can go wrong in aircraft code anywhere in the game during the game, so some stuff won't work and you might want to continue your flight and this might save you. Um, so yeah. So the first thing you want to do is power up the aircraft. We have a secret spot here to pull up the quality wings menu or we can hit the aft external power button. The XT stands for external most of the time. So first thing we want to do is we want to establish power on the aircraft. So we hit our battery switch. You'll hear the system start to come to life. You'll see some stuff turn on like the uh, light here for the MFD changers. will come on. The... Some of these systems will start to power up in a minute. The quality wings 787 is a really detailed aircraft. When I say that, you, have, you can see the dust on the displays, the screens, see different things. So, you won't see much come on here, even though I'm pretty sure that the MFD should come on in a minute. You won't see much stuff happening, but if you go to your secret click spot here or the aft external power. It will pull up this menu. If you want to open your doors, you can open them. The cool thing about the quality wing 757 is that you have a color panel here. So you can change the color of your inside of your, the cabin of your aircraft. You can turn on the cabin lighting. But we want to get the external power. And I'll show you the external power right here. When you click it, it will turn green, which means it's connected. And the forward external power light, left and right, will say available. And um, by default, these. Um, which these um, MFD panels down here will come on with the FMC by default. Like most aircraft would have the FMC down there. And to give our aircraft some more power, we're going to hit one switch and it'll turn on both. I'm pretty sure it does that in the real aircraft. The FX sound power sadly doesn't work on this. This is the FSX model, so I'm not sure about the P3D. Um, so yeah, so you'll hear the systems come to life and you'll see the displays will also start to come to life And like I said, you have one panel for your MFD fully on the captain's side And I have one on the first officer side And then you'll have these special displays which can change their split into half So you can have a full navigate display You can have a full anything of these once you put it next to each other There are some stuff coming up on this and um um if it's dark i'll probably showcase that in a minute this is dark or you might need to just power up the aircraft for the cabin light and the call on so once we have power we want to let the ground current all that so we'll turn on the nav light you see that night turn on i'm pretty sure these are the outside yes there are the outside lights on the, the end of the wings and I wonder if the, I think that these you can put checklists on here. I'm not sure about that. I think you can. So next thing we want to do is make sure surely that our IFE passenger seats and cabin utility switches switches are on. Um, make sure all of your generator control switches are on. Make sure your left and right engine hydraulic switches are on. Make sure that your engine starters are to normal and your EC, EEC mode is to normal and guarded. Make sure that your cargo this fire discard switch guard is guarded. Make sure your passenger oxygen is guarded. Every switch that has a guard on it, make sure that it's guarded before going through anything else. This is the inertial referencing system. I'll explain that later. Um, flight at door power, you can turn it on. Heading reference. Make sure I set the normal, or it will give you a different heading than what ATC would give you. You only use normal reference. You only use the other one I think if ATC tells you, or if you're flying by yourself, I'm not sure. We have the tuning control panel here that you can click to bring this up. If your map, your clock, that's chrono. I'll explain that at a later day. So, as I said, you want to go here, and you want to go to the left. I'm going to make sure it's selected. Checklist, or you can put it on right, whichever one you want, but make sure you put this back here because this is a very important display right here. It shows your engine, performance, your fuel quantity, everything. So, as I said, parking brake is set, fuel control switches are the cutoff, flight, instruments, heading, and altimeter are checked. 
Want to click up? From the flight deck, this is your It'll play automatic you messages. Aboard, today's flight. Oxygen. Just finishing up our last minute paper. Uh, let's Once test that on our side. Back, we're estimating an on time departure. Oxygen is working. Very nice. That's a hundred percent. The checklist is not complete. Safety, normal. So Passenger sign before a start. Once we're gonna set up the FMC first, though. So. Sit back and relax. So when the aircraft loads up by default, you'll see these two discrets down here, and you'll. See that some things will tell you load panel state and updates are there. I use a specific map data so it uh, stays on that so I don't get confused or anything. So on the lower MFD, you'll see this is basically your MFD. You have a right one and a left, a left one and a right one. My bad. You'll have a keypad over here with everything. This will have letters, which we'll get to in a minute. Execute buttons. Okay. So the first thing you want to do. Let's go to init reference thing. Uh, position. You want to put in your reference airport in case you need to get um, a position from the gate. I want to go to the next page and you can pick any. Um, you, I would suggest picking from the FMC or GPF, but you can't currently do that right now. What you want to do is since we're using the FMC now, we want to head over to the overhead panel. Wait, oh, my bad. I have specific switches map for this. There you go. All right, so let's go up here and turn on the left IRS system to on. Turn the right one on to on and make sure it's not saying on battery, which will be on back. Okay. Let's head back down here. To position. Next. And on the menu, you want to go here to info. And you can configure different things like when you want to use the airport database for the EFB from what month or year. Very well, this is 2014. You can change your miscellaneous stuff here the night chart, the flight plan overlay, the exclude Mr. chart. You can configure all of this in here. The sound, if you want to announce the GPS warnings or play the Q pass, start out how long the eyeglass takes to align, and that's that's the line on other aircraft. In other tutorials, you will see that the IRS is a very important part of the aircraft. If you don't align it, the navigation displays and the altimeter heading, everything will not work. On older aircraft, you have analog gauges, so you don't need that. But on these newer aircraft, you surely do need it. And when flying the 737, I love to use the analog panels because it doesn't require the IRS. And if the IRS fails, this fails too, so it's no use. Pretty sure that's the same thing in real life. I'm not sure if quality wings is 100% correct. All right, so I want to put this VHF on mic. Um, on PMDG, if you don't do that, the ATC won't work. And if you're using Batson and stuff like that, yeah, that's a little bit of extra realism. You want to use that? But okay, let's head back down here to our panel. And I'm pretty sure yeah, we can't get it from there. But what I do know is that the G you'll get the GPS position manually. And I'm pretty sure it's already, it should be already aligned. Um, you can't put that in there, so let's forget about that. Let's see where it's at. So, route. We're going from Groundly Adams to Groundly Adams. It's just an example. So, you put in your origin I call there, your ICAO code. You can find those by just searching it up on Google and stuff or using SimBrief. Uh, I, I, I promised a SimBrief tutorial for so long, but I haven't done it yet. Flight number will do a 2TOM, which is 2 I call 225. We'll go departing and arriving runway 09er at Grantley Adams. We'll go on arriving. At, uh, well, actually, we can't do that yet. What you do is you would go into route, for example, go to the next page. You would, for example, put in a waypoint. I'll show you how to set it in brief so that I don't have to do, I have to do a video on that. But so say I had a waypoint that said Olido via. Don't worry about that. You can put in DCT, which means direct or direct exactly, I'm pretty sure. And it should work as if you put in DCT, but if you don't want to do that, you can just put in two. Boom. That's a waypoint right there. I know it's a waypoint by heart because this is my home airport. The waypoint's right out there. You can't see it in real life, but it's programmed into the FMC and GPI manually. Oh, he's taxing. That's nice. So let me go back to my cockpit. Um, so yeah. So if I wanted to go to Olido, come back and then arrive at um, the airport's 
for example, only ILS 09 so far has, only runway 09 has an ILS so far that I know of. I'm not sure if they installed one or two seven, and they haven't. Everybody, you 09 is the most used. I'm pretty sure for bad weather or rainy runways, they would use different runways. So I'm gonna pick ILS Z, which means Zulu 09. And I'm gonna transition using on Lido, which is the red point I originally put in. This will depend on if you have a, like a flight plan and you choose an approach with the stars and then you have a transition, you have to go from that start to that transition waypoint. I'll explain that. When I do this same brief tutorial, then we want to go back to our um, route page to view previous. Um, company routes are for if you have a flight plan already stored in your database. So you can just type that in and it'll bring up the waypoint and everything. And all you have to do is click activate. On some planes, it will insert the flight number automatically. Oh, why does that have Tom? Okay. Tom 225. So it, it will put, I'm pretty sure sometimes it puts the flight numbers in automatically. Uh, so yeah, you'll have your alternative airports here that you can revert. You can um, request the weather there or divert there. I love the 7 sound because of all of the technology. I love older planes and newer planes. I love the brink of the older planes and the top of the newer planes. I love this. Like, just that you can have two displays, check out everything in one go. It's a much safer aircraft to use. And you can pop up to these screens here. These screens are touchable. But anyways, so to get your flight plan log and ready to go, you can press Alt Active. It will not do that. It will not put it in yet. You have to press the Execute button here. Here, I'm going to use here. I'm normally just using there. And then you have to shut out your performance. It will automatically calculate your zero fuel weight for you. It will calculate your fuel already. Your cruise altitude, you'd want to put flight level and the uh, um, first numbers of what level you're flying. Just for an example, flight level, if you're flying 40,000 feet, you'll put flight level 400. If you're flying at 45,000 feet, you put flight level 450. And if you're putting, if you're going to like flight level 4,250 feet, you'll put flight level 425. I mean, I mean, do I know? 425. Boom, that's 45,000, that's 42,500 feet. Execute. After takeoff checklist. I don't know why he's running that because we have not Listen even, checklist. we have not even gotten off the ground yet. Oh, it's in it, so you'll find us on your flight plan. I'm just gonna put an example of 50. Reserves is how much fuel do you have left, I'm pretty sure. You can just put, it'll put that in automatically for you. It does that for me all the time, but I'm not sure about, oh, it's unable, oh yes. You cannot go above 41. No, 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 no. Wait, I think the max cruise height of the 787 is either 42,000 or 41,000. For the 777, example, is 43. For, you have different, like, flight levels for different aircraft. So, like, for the A321 or A320, it would be, like, 39,500 feet is a max climb. So, I'm going to put in flight level 410. Invite you to sit back. My bad, my bad. Flight level 410. Four one one there. Boom. That's cute. Computer top of this and before the top of climb. Um, for example, for this flight plan, probably do the 6,000 there at the max. Or you can just put in 6,000 if it's a number like that. Reserves. Uh, why is this not taking it? Flight level 100. Okay, well, let me do 2,000 feet, for example. Okay. I have no idea why it's doing that, probably. You can request your performance data, also. And this is where you say you put how much thrust to use a D-rate, for example. So, at least 20%, it will bump up the engine and one use. Uh, if we go back to there, it's going to be, or right, climb 95.5. Yeah, so, you, so this is basically how much in power you'll use, how you'll climb out, it, 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 that's what it basically is. So, when you um also start at the aircraft, and you'll first see what engine you have, what app aircraft you have, what nav data you have, what model aircraft you're flying, what program, you know, 
All right, so for takeoff, this is where we calculate our takeoff speeds. For example, if I have a center of gravity 17, I just put that in there, 17, and I will trim. I forgot what the trim is, sadly. Um, it has set that trim for the amount of, wait, where's the trim? Gotta be somewhere in here. I have to look that up and find it. But we're just going for a cool and dark procedure. This is extra stuff. So, 4.25. Show you the runway you're taking off from the V speed that is automatically calculated. Or in some cases, you can request the takeoff data. Um, so, you can set the flaps that you're going. So, you have up until flaps 30. So, you have one. You have up, which is flaps are not there. One is slaps, five is flaps, 15 more flaps, 20 more flaps, 25 more flaps, and 30 more flaps. Um, um, so I'm gonna go with flaps 15, for example. You need at least five for takeoff, and 15 is max for takeoff, I'm pretty sure, but we'll use five. And you'll see the V-speed will change. V1 is a speed where you cannot abort the takeoff at anymore, so you have to continue. Sometimes this might not calculate it correctly because quite so much light soon. For VR, that's a rotate speed where you pull back on the stick gently to lift the aircraft off of the ground. V2 is basically a speed where you have to reach before you can reach your safe climb out, or it's a reference speed. Um, so you can go by stress limit. When you finish setting up everything, it will tell you um basically it should tell you i don't know why it's not but um oh probably because i have not put in that yet so it's not gonna tell me it's complete i'm gonna put in reserve is 2.5 you know, for example yep so it doesn't tell you that it's correct in both sides cross take off Okay, so that's a basic. We fight complete. Fix legs. Legs is the uh, waypoints basically in a sorted form where you need to be at different waypoints. Now, progress is how is the progress. You can get a progress report from here. It's basically how far you've gone, your fuel quantity, how much fuel you have at a specific waypoint. The progress, what time you'll reach at the waypoint. Uh, I'm not sure what DTG means. I probably know, but I just can't remember. Um, okay, hydro patch system. So, we want to start up the APU, we want to start the engine. But in order to do that, we need bleed air pressure to start the engine. So, we'll go up here and start the APU. Turn that switch on and say full. Make sure the light turns off and then start. Hold that down until it goes back to on automatically. It has a spring. Um, make sure it packs it off. I mean, you can put them on auto and automatically do stuff for you, but. I like to keep it off just to be sure. And before engine start, we turn on the beacon light. Um, that's when you see about something. I don't know. You can't even trying to get your flight attendants worry of stuff. Okay. And uh, you can turn on the aft fuel pump manually for the AP or I'll do it manually because this is a new aircraft. Like, for example, the triple seven will do the same thing. The seven eight seven cockpit is basically the triple seven, but it's in a, in, in, a, in a different manner, it has a less buttons and switches. Yeah? And also what I like to do is make sure to test the battery and get a high reading. Flowing power, that's worth playing or whatever. Um, ground test, that's testing ground, CBR, you can test that. There is it. ELC, make sure that switch is guarded on this arm. Cargo temperature, this is control your cargo temperature. Forward cargo flow, your bulk, set out auto humid. Pretty sure that's humidifier or something. I'm not sure about that. We don't need that though. Um, air conditioning. This is your whole panel with the air conditioning. This is your fuel jettison, the fuel dump and stuff. So everything is labeled so that you won't get lost. So let's look for those. So like electrical is right here. Hydraulic passenger sign. That's the ice. Usual. Okay, you have your wipers also, which do work. Turn that back there to off. Um, yeah, makes a nice sound. Um, so yeah, so the APU is now started. Um, 
on the AP reading, let me get the, oh, that's where you find your trim, I'm pretty sure, yep, right there, right, it's the spade right there, okay, let me go to systems, uh, what are we looking for? We're looking for the APU. So air, you can see the air distribution from the APU here. I'm just going. Uh, electricity from the APU generator left and right, and you're also getting for external power. And the APU is a small engine in the back of the aircraft to power it. And you have it bleed air to start engines when you don't have ground air, which I'm pretty sure most countries want. It depends on what airport you're at. So yeah, it can also power hydraulic system so that it'll give you that little extra boost you need if both engines shut down, power and everything. So you still have that. Um, okay, so when your AP was started and it's on, let me try and find this again. Uh, hydraulics. So, okay, so your AP will appear right here. It'll show you where it, it, what engine is drawing fuel, where it's drawing from, door, you show your doors, circuit breakers, um, you have your circuit breakers, everything there, if it's on display, um, you can change, like, it's basically what's up there, but on here, so yeah, um, okay, so start us. If you hear, make sure your RPM is a 102.1, oil pressure is at 87, oil temperature is supposed to be 45, oil quantity is uh, over 5, liquid cooling is running, uh, the oxygen is running good, and the hydraulics are running. Those will come out when we start engines, you'll see warnings here, don't worry about those, those are normal. FMC jet messages are normal. When the engines are not started, hydraulic pressure not being there is normal because you have to start the engines to provide that hydraulic pressure. So, want to get starting the engine. So, make sure if your generator switches are on. So, you can take this off of the external power. If you turn off your APU generator switches, it will not provide power to the aircraft. So, let's get rid of the external power. APU will automatically provide bleed air. Make sure your trimmer switches on your... Um, Reset fans and equipment cooling or auto. Okay, so let's put in these fuel pumps on that side. Let's start the right engine. We're starting now. Okay, put that switch. The starter, right? You'll hear the engine start to spool up. Monitor the N2 and make sure it gets to 20 before you start the engine. Our N2 is rising successfully. And now we got the 20. We're gonna kick in the fuel. 20. We'll see the engine will start to come to life. Please, I have some amazing sounds. Engine is now started. Engine is coming up successfully. Auto start. And on the triple seven, you'll see, and the seven forty seven, the seven seven forty seven, you'll see auto start switch. Um, turn on your window heat switch on. Make sure your emergency exit lights are um guarded and to are set to arm. Um, as I said before, make sure your flight that door power is on. Um, on is it's on, and uh, once your engine is fully started, it'll, the start will pop out to normal. Starting left engine, left engine starting successfully. The engine will show green and running when it's fully started. And the N2 will slowly start to come up. And make sure it gets to 20 before you put in the fuel. You can put it in before, but for a better start, you want to put in 20. And in real life, for maintenance purposes, you have to do um, specific things in real life to keep your engines running. So, like, for example, say some really realistic plant aircraft and um, FSX, you'll need to perform maintenance on the aircraft or stuff, like landing gear, the Engines can fail if you stress over stress the engines, they will fail on the MD80 on the mad dog, and you'll have to repair them eventually. Or it just won't work. Make sure you have a successful N1 of 71 on both. One thing I sadly have forgotten, which is something I should not, is I have forgotten 
to do the fire test, put on your left fuel pump. Put on the center if you have. I don't have any. Well, actually I do. Turn these hydraulics to auto or on if you please. Ramary turbine, make sure that's guarded. The Ramary turbine will provide um, power to the aircraft in case of if you failure in failure. So click the fire and overheat test so, and make sure all lights are illuminated and you hear the warning noise on the aircraft. That's the lights test. Make sure they're all illuminated. Okay, so I'm going to do a takeoff. Uh, a takeoff. Um, Test to make sure that everything is set up correctly and show you how to basically take off the aircraft so we can turn on the logo light now you'll mostly use that light at night correction so we're ready for push and start you would usually contact ADC let's, let's have our nice push back here boom okay might want to keep your APU on before take off. You can turn on the packs now. Make sure the packs are not on before in the start or the engine won't start because it will not be supplied with enough the air pressure. Now here's the TCAS system down here. So you basically want to go to menu, hit XPDR, that's the um, transponder. Make sure it's on normal. Um, put in whatever core ATC tells you to squat, so it to tell you to squat 2568. Put that in there, boom, and also do not forget to turn on your transponder. So to do that, transponder is right here, so you put it T A R A. Um, make sure it's not standby or won't work. Glide switch and hit it, or it'll cancel switches. Um, you'll have some of the other stuff. Okay, we are fully ready to taxi. So I am going to, once he clears there, I'm going to attack, start the taxi. I'm gonna set my flat to five light set. You wanna make sure your RDB switch is RT rejected takeoff. Ladies and gentlemen, Doors to auto. We're starting our taxi. I'm gonna switch this back to nav display. And you can use your terrain. I'll show you terrain in the area. I'm gonna try to take off from this section since our runway at home is so long. I don't have to use the full extent in real life, it would. But I don't have to because the runway is that long. I should be able to get us enough power to get there. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be taxiing for the next few minutes. So please remain seated with your seatbelt fastened until the captain turns off the fastened seatbelt sign. At that time, please remember to check around your seating area, in the seat pockets, and overhead bins for all personal belongings that you brought on board. Please take care when opening the overhead bins, as the contents may have shifted. Okay, so turn in flight directory, so they will direct you in flight. So on arm your LMAP, that's the lateral navigation. It will guide you along your flight path automatically. That is how the auto, um, you call it the automatic. The autopilot would follow your flight plan. Okay, let's turn here. That's how you control your speed, basically. And this is how you control your altitude, how you're heading. If I'm seeing intercept heading. Okay, so. So, parking brake, engines, idle, checklist, any ice, auto, recall check, flight controls check. Pull left, pull right, pull up, pull down, good. Okay, I'll do a full flight tutorial later on. And I will live stream this tomorrow or Friday. Get okay, landing lights on. But also, do not forget to turn on your ring and strobe lights. And for taxi, use a taxi light. But this is just a quick runoff. So, you can run it, turn off. Make sure your all your switches are guarded, please. <laughs> Make sure, especially your primary flight computers are guarded. Or you don't want those to shut off because then your flight computers will stop working unless you put it back into the position. So, take off. 
your the amount of thruster enemies needs to be able to be shown in green. You can decide that manually or you at the um auto press. The auto thrust do it. Okay, so take off. I'm using full thrust because we're taking off from a shorter part of it. Take off power set. Eddie knots cross check. Grab your HUD here, which will start working when you power on the aircraft. Okay, 120. B1, rotate. B2. Pause the brake, get out. Normal. Mining gear, I'll take off. Flops. That right thing is the overspeed mark. If you go over that, it means you're overspeeding and you'll probably damage something. For sure, though. Slaps up, slaps up. That is your disc monitor for the flaps and your gear. When your gear is done and it's fully down, it will show green and the up. When it's down, I'll show you the down. Flaps are up. That goes to completing. Now display. The auto throttle has come on. Make sure you. If you want to. Play without the auto throttle, turn that off and let it fly manually using the throttle manually. And on the electric engines, if you go below the red speed, it will stall. If you go above and it has a red marker, it means you're always speeding. Clear master caution, auto throttle disconnect. I know that you're supposed to keep these on, and it gives you a warning when they're not on. I'm gonna keep these off for now. Hold on, the nose of the aircraft so I don't stall. Um, but yeah, that's a basic uh, calling art tutorial. I'm gonna redo this because it might not have been the best tutorial. And I'll show you, I've not flown this aircraft a lot of time. Only once, actually. Sadly. And I first time I loved it. So yeah, um, thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. And bye.